Hello everybody. Today I am going to discuss about face controlled converter with RL load. Last class I have discussed about single phase half controlled converter with resistive load. With RL load, some interesting features we will see. Here we will see positive and negative magnitude of inductor voltage. Though the input voltage is positive, then I will analyze the complete converter with RL load. So let's start. Here in the circuit, you can see AC input is there. A thyristor is connected with RL load. Across the RL load, the output voltage we will measure. As it is a series circuit, so input current is equal to load current. So that current we will measure. So let's analyze this one. First waveform is your input voltage, and second one output voltage, third inductor voltage, and fourth one inductor current, or you can say load current. As we know that a thyristor conducts if you know is connected to positive supply. Cathode to negative supply and gate current is available. So here, zero to pi, positive input voltage is there across the SCR. Now at alpha, gate current is applied. Then from alpha, the thyristor will start conducting. As soon as thyristor is on. Output voltage equal to input voltage. Assuming that voltage drop across the SCR is zero, so the output voltage will follow exactly the same pattern as input voltage till it is on. Then inductor voltage across the inductor till it is seen that positive magnitude as well as negative magnitude voltage is available, and the positive voltage across the inductor is equal to Negative voltage across the inductor. As you can see, the area above zero or positive inductor voltage equal to area below zero negative inductor voltage. So the average voltage across the inductor is zero. It will affect the conduction period of thyristor. Let's see how it will affect. You can see the load current. As soon as thyristor is on, load current will start increasing. Now this load current will lag the supply voltage by certain degree. As we know, in case of inductive load, current is lagging the supply voltage. So when input voltage achieves peak value, the inductor current or the load current still it is less than its maximum value. Now after achieving maximum current the inductor current will now decrease because the input voltage is decreasing that is the driving voltage for this load current so as the input voltage is decreasing inductor current will also reduce and when input voltage is zero still some current is there and it will be off or it will be zero at angle beta so it is clear that though the input voltage is zero at pi our thyristor is still conducting then what is the reason behind it you can see that inductor voltage it is positive as well as negative now the inductor voltage is positive when the inductor current is increasing and inductor voltage is negative when the inductor current is decreasing now when the inductor voltage is neg negative after pi the input voltage is also negative so net voltage across the scr after pi it is positive so inductor voltage minus the source voltage is equal to positive voltage so though the input voltage is negative but the net voltage across the scr is positive because 
the inductor voltage is negative. So the SCR will continue to conduct or you can say net voltage means VL minus AC input is 0 and that instant is achieved at angle beta. So at beta the resistor is reverse bias and current is 0. So the conduction period here it is not from alpha to pi but it is from alpha to beta. So compared to resistive load here the conduction period is more. So as the conduction period is more and the output voltage is following the input voltage so little bit of negative voltage also we are getting across the output voltage. So from pi to beta the output voltage is negative and from alpha to pi output voltage is positive. So if you will see the average output voltage here it will reduce. In case of resistance the average output voltage we have got from alpha to pi. Here average output voltage we will get from alpha to beta and as the negative portion is there so the output voltage will reduce. So two interesting thing here we have seen that inductor voltage is positive as well as negative and conduction period of the thyristor is more than pi up to beta because some amount of energy remain stored across the inductor and inductor will continue to discharge till it is getting favorable condition to discharge and that will occur till the net voltage inductor voltage minus source voltage is equal to some positive voltage and during this positive voltage duration thyristor will continue to conduct and the extra current we are getting from pi to beta. So the current is also here we are getting from pi to beta. So two things inductor voltage is positive as well as negative and the current is, is developed after pi also. So let's discuss about this is why it happens. So extra conduction of thyristor is because of the inductor and the negative inductor voltage. Now let's see voltage across the inductor is equal to L into di dt. dt is always positive. Now di. di is equal to final value of the current minus initial value of the current. So at any instant between alpha to peak value of the load current. You can see we just uh, observe the load current. So alpha to peak value of the load current, its final value is always more than the initial value. So at any instant of time you can find this value, di will always be positive. So vl is equal to l into di dt will always be positive. That's why during that duration we are getting positive output voltage. Now after its peak value till beta final value is always less than the initial value. So di will be negative. So voltage across the inductor dl is equal to l into di dt. As di is negative so l di dt is negative. So the voltage across the inductor is negative. So this is the reason behind it that between alpha to peak value of the load current inductor voltage is positive and peak value of the load current to beta inductor voltage is negative. And the negative inductor voltage is forcing the SCR to continue conduction after pi also. So between pi to beta we are getting the extra conduction because of this negative inductor voltage. Now let's analyze the circuit. Input voltage we have given Vm sin theta across the RL load. So Vm sin theta is equal to Ri plus L into di dt. I is the current flowing through the circuit. Now to analyze this circuit a very simple method is used. Here the net current, the current I is equal to I1 plus I2. Here two currents are assumed. I1 is the steady state current and I2 is the transient state current. Steady state current simply we have found out from I1 is equal to V by impedance of the circuit 
into sin of theta minus phi and phi is assumed here as the lagging angle and phi is equal to 10 inverse x by r where x is equal to omega r and i2 is the current when voltage source is zero so let's solve this equation now so i1 already uh, i have written in equation number 2 let's find i2 ri2 plus l di2 dt is equal to 0 so this first order differential equation after solving you will get i2 is equal to k e to the power minus r by l into t where k is a constant depends upon the initial value of the circuit so net current i is equal to steady state current plus transient current we can write vm by root under r square plus x square this is the impedance of the circuit sine of theta minus phi plus k e to the power minus r by l into t so this equation number 5 is the expression giving net current flowing through the circuit i now let's find the value of this k to find the value of this constant let's consider the initial condition at theta is equal to alpha thyristor starts conducting so we can assume here that that is the starting point of the current and that is i equal to g substituting theta is equal to alpha in equation number 5 and i equal to 0 we will get the value of this k as minus bm by root under r square plus x square sin of alpha minus phi as theta is equal to alpha into e to the power minus r alpha by l omega here t is equal to alpha by omega because theta is equal to omega t is equal to alpha every day. substituting 6 in 5 we will get final expression i is equal to bm by root under r square plus x square sin theta minus phi minus bm by root under r square plus x square sin alpha minus phi e to the power minus r alpha by l omega e to the power minus r by l into t now at the same time we don't know the value of beta at what angle our thyristor will stop conducting so from alpha to beta it is conducting and the conduction angle is beta minus alpha now to find the conduction angle or the conduction period you should know the value of beta so to find that beta let's see at theta is equal to beta also current is zero so that is the final value so at theta is equal to beta also current is zero so substitute i equal to 0 and theta is equal to beta in equation number 7 we will get sin of beta minus phi is equal to sin of alpha minus phi e to the power minus r alpha by l omega e to the power minus r by l into beta so from here as you know the instant of triggering at what angle you are going to trigger the SCR you can find the value of beta from equation number 8 now let's find the average output voltage here v0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi complete time period integration alpha to beta vm sin theta d theta the range is alpha to beta because our thyristor is on during alpha to beta and the output voltage is following the input voltage pattern that's why it is vm sin theta so you will get vm by 2 pi cos of alpha minus cos of beta if you want to find rms output voltage and likewise we will continue root then 1 by 2 pi is the mean then alpha to beta vm square sin square theta d theta so finally v0 r is equal to vm by 2 root pi square root of beta minus alpha minus half of sine to beta minus sine to alpha so from here you can find the value of rms output voltage if you want to find rms output current just use the expression 7 with this limit then to find the input power factor you have to follow the same process as we have done in case of resistive load input power is equal to output power so 
I'm not extending this one from here. It will be too much uh, lengthy. In later classes, we will see when I will examine RLE load with freewheeling diode. So today I have discussed about very interesting feature of inductor in single phase half controlled rectifier. There we have seen that inductor voltage is positive as well as negative during the positive half cycle of the input supply and as the inductor voltage is reversed during the discharging period of the load current and that voltage allow some extra duration to thyristor to conduct then we have found out the value of commutation angle beta then average output voltage rms output voltage next class we will see some more interesting features of this controlled rectifier thank you